All right, everyone, welcome back to Trunk Talk. My name is Charlotte. My name is Gabby. And today, this is episode three, and we're talking about robo taxis. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get into that, this podcast, this is for anyone who is interested in vehicles. We like to talk about all things automotive and put a little bit of a fun twist on it. And quite honestly, we just love talking about cars. And somehow we've been able to do that in our job. Yes. <laughs> so today's topic, we're going to be talking about robo taxis and Gabby. What's a robo taxi? I'm so glad you asked that, Charlotte. Let's get into it. So essentially a robo taxi is a fully autonomous, I, I say fully lightly driving experience. Mm. So these vehicles are usually adapted with a level four autonomy, <laughs> for lack of better terms. And these vehicles are gonna have cameras everywhere. Mm. So think cameras on the top, on the sides, on the back, everywhere on this vehicle, there's either some sort of camera or sensor, or even taking it a step further, a LIDAR laser-based sensor. Ooh. So that's something you don't see in a lot of vehicles that we have nowadays. No. Now, chances are, Charlotte, what do you drive? I drive currently a 2023 Kia Sportage X-Line okay. Limited. So your vehicle is equipped with highway drive assist, mm -hmm. smart cruise control, mm -hmm. forward collision avoidance. You already have a lot of autonomous or semi-autonomous features on your car. Yes. These robo-taxis take it so many steps mm -hmm. further to incorporate a driverless driving experience. So ride shares are commonly where you're going to see these vehicles. Com not commonly, I think they're I think exclusively. That's, <laughs> you generally think of taxi, you think yeah. of like a, some type of ride share uh, type situation. Exactly. And as of now in North America, they're only available in four different cities. Mm. So San Francisco, um, Phoenix, LA, and Las Vegas. Now, aside from being American cities, yes. they all have something in common. Yes. <laughs> well, what would that be? So they're all going to be kind of geofenced in mm -hmm. a set area, so they can't escape their boundaries. If you have a very, very long drive, let's say you're driving from city to city, the car's not going to do that. It's stuck in its region, and for good reason. These vehicles, mm -hmm. they've gone through a lot of testing and tuning to make sure that they are obviously safe um, and able to drive in such busy cities. So those are all very, very high traffic cities, both yeah. pedestrian wise and road wise. Um, the whole kind of mission between these robo taxis are to minimize people on the road. Mm. And while it doesn't really minimize cars because these are obviously vehicles and they're taking up space on the road, these cars aren't going to drive drunk, they're not gonna drive sleepy, they're not going to disobey laws, like they're not gonna speed, they're not gonna street race, that kind of thing. But they also don't possess human creativity or human judgment and that's where we're yeah. going to get into a couple more talking points later on in this video and that's where things get very difficult for me something yeah. I don't think I could do it what do you think I think on the surface robo taxis are like such a neat idea some of the things that I've written down from my notes is how different they are from personally owned autonomous vehicles like what we mm -hmm. see in production like what is so different than even what we you know conceptualize as Tesla's autopilot or full self-drive yes. um, and a lot of them are in a better position for commercial deployment mm -hmm. than what we see. And a lot of that is, again, because they're in those geofenced areas. Yes. And also, like, they're pulled off the road in bad conditions. Like, all of those cities that Gabby mentioned is, think of where they are geographically, is they're in warm, consistent climates where we don't see a high um, temperature variation. Mm -hmm. We are based in Brantford, Ontario, Canada. Yeah, just last week, our roads were covered in slush. The yep. roads were dirty, gross. Our Everyone's car was grungy and it was yeah. like minus 20 degrees today one week later it's six degrees yeah. there's no snow on the roads everything like that it's it's crazy how different it is yeah <laughs> um but uh the thing about robo taxis is how quickly too is they are advancing in the industry yes and a lot of them it's not just regular speaking of advancing in the industry it's not just regular you know ice vehicles that we are seeing it's predominantly evs isn't it yes so a big player in the um robo-taxi game is going to be Cruise, mm -hmm. which is based by GM, so General Motors, and they utilize Chevy Bolt EVs. Now, that, of course, is a fully electric vehicle, and if you're curious to see, because my big question was, okay, who's charging these cars? <laughs> because the car can't plug itself in. Stay tuned for our fun fact at the end of this episode. Ooh. Anyway, <laughs> and then we also have um, Waymo, which also utilizes Jaguar EVs, so a yeah. more premium ride experience, which mm -hmm. I think is another thing that kind of adds to the novelty of these rides. The only time I don't think I could see myself as a consumer if I was in San Francisco, pick a robo taxi over a regular Uber driver, mm -hmm. unless it was my first time and I was like, you know what, let's do this. Something out of, of a novelty. Yeah, something more fun. But when it comes to um, expense wise and just overall 
what my choice would be, I think I would still go towards an Uber driver. I yeah, I think I would too. I think I'm well, still <laughs> too fearful. Yeah, fear, um. and then also the cost. So mm -hmm. in some instances, there are going to be cheaper for these. Um, oh my gosh, robo taxis. <laughs> but there's for the majority of the time, it's still cheaper to get an Uber, unless it's a. That's crazy. Yeah, it's it's weird, eh? One of the interesting <laughs> things is when I was looking at some of the advantages of what robo taxis are, is mm -hmm. a lot of them were pointing more to rideshare companies yeah. as. Um, you know, they're the ones who are really benefiting from it because all of a sudden they don't have drivers on their payroll. So, of course, they're reducing their operating expenses. Um, and then also just that they're able to kind of better map obstacles to theoretically cut down on accidents. But as I'm looking at this, I'm like, what are the real benefits for the consumer? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and I can't think of any right now. Um, I know in the future they are planning on uh, robo taxis being much cheaper than Ubers yeah. just because they're going to be more available. Um, and also working all hours of the day, there's yeah. always going to be robo taxis on fleet where Uber drivers, there might be some times of the day where there's going to be less people working and that's totally fair. Um, I'm also glad you mentioned that it reduces expenses by mm -hmm. not having a driver. There is still a massive fleet of people working on these vehicles. Yeah. So although there is no driver in the car with you, all those vehicles are being monitored. And let's say there's an instance where the car doesn't know what to do. So again, it's a robot. It's not a person. It doesn't have judgment. It doesn't have its own creativity. If there's, let's say, an emergency vehicle and they're doing a blockade because an accident happened and the car can't compute what to do, it goes to an operator mm -hmm. that's actually in a control center and that operator is who is going to control the vehicle. That's bizarre to me. That is absolutely insane. And it's, I mean, it's good though, because you need to have some type of manual override in these type of situations. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm curious to see if it'll ever get as far as having, you know, AI dispatch. Obviously we're seeing a huge trend in AI just in, in regular consumer uses. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, uh, that's pretty crazy. But that mm -hmm. also touches on some of the disadvantages of having these robo taxis. And this is, you know, this is just the disadvantage of the vehicle itself, not even taking into consideration kind of human input, human driving input. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we know they can hinder first response vehicles. In Ontario is we actually have traffic rules where if you have a first response vehicle coming that's got sirens on, lights on, you pull over to the right side of the road yep. and you stop, you let them pass. Yes. I know that's not the case for everyone in the States, which yes. is crazy to me yeah so I'm curious to see how that would all work out um, but yeah also you know when it comes to road signs it's, there's been reports of them running stop signs not necessarily um, taking into consideration construction or other items along those lines that are are not mapped out yeah I, I did mention that where we're from we don't have robo taxis as an option but we do have speed cameras mm -hmm. and those speed cameras every time I see one they are spray painted over now, that leads me to believe if someone wanted to spray paint one of these robo taxis, and I don't know, that car's out of service. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's very easy to kind of hinder these vehicles' ability to perform. Or, Which is also probably why they're limited to yeah. the warm weather, because here in Canada, we can get salt and snow and ice building up on sensors in our vehicles mm -hmm. that are not, you know, level four, level five autonomous driving. Mm -hmm. And it impedes the work of the sensor. It'll give you the notification on the dash. So it's like, oh, okay, I can't even really uh, yeah. use this sensor right now. So usability wise, everything, as long as the conditions are good mm -hmm. and there's obviously no human interaction with the vehicle or any sort of um, graffiti or damage done to the car, it should operate perfectly, right? Mm -hmm. Theoretically. Right, okay. <laughs> now there are, have been some instances, I'm sure if you guys type in RoboTaxi to your Google search, you'll see a lot of things. I did mm -hmm. read a couple things about Cruise specifically. And um, a lot of the what they praise is the fact that they have no at-fault accidents, but the cars are not always able to respond as a human would to outside incidents. So let's yeah. say maybe a pedestrian thing happening on the sidewalk or another collision and how your car will react to it. Absolutely. It doesn't have our brain. <laughs> yeah. Which sometimes it works in the benefit. Yeah, I was gonna say, sometimes that's great. <laughs> sometimes that's beneficial, but other times being a person behind yeah. the wheel, that's helpful. Well, the thing about being a person and not being, you know, technology, mm -hmm. a literal computer, is we understand more of how people obviously work. You know, yeah. we have that commonality. We understand, you mm -hmm. know, people's thought process and stuff like that too. Yeah. Um, one thing I thought of, and I'm not sure what the rules are for this in the States, because again, we are located in Ontario, Canada, but there are funeral processions here, and you do not cut into that. That is the family, they're in 
their service. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely, and that's a respect thing. Yeah, a respect thing, and also trucks. If you see an oversized truck or an oversized load, and they have their, you know, um, escort truck and everything with them, or their fleet, or even just any sort of convoy of vehicles mm -hmm. that you can tell, even motorcycles, we know not to essentially cut them out mm -hmm. or separate them. What is a robo taxi going to do in these common courtesy or just common knowledge situations? Yeah. It's interesting to see if there's programming behind that because it's not necessarily law. Yes. Um, where these are more so programmed based on the rules of the road, like you know what is the speed limit. We're gonna make sure that we're not impeding that, mm -hmm. and uh, and items, you know, like that when it comes to driving. Yeah. So senses like that. I mean, obviously, you know, your taxi is not gonna do any street racing or any sort of mm -hmm. craziness on the road, but it's uh, it's so hard because there's so many benefits and so many things that I think aren't necessarily negatives, but yeah. we're more so just afraid of or needs mm -hmm. work. And the reality is what robo taxis are today are the dumbest it's going to be. It's only going to get better from point. there. That's a good point. That's a really good point. So it's it's scary. It's going to improve for sure, but... <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> hopefully it improves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, kind of where robo taxis is coming from is like what you said is the main goal is pretty much take vehicles off the road and a lot of that really goes hand in hand with the sustainability initiative mm -hmm. so here in canada is we have a, a big sustainability initiative trying to change over to the bulk of our new production or new purchase vehicles being evs instead of traditional ICE. Mm -hmm. um, now i'm curious because they're gonna have to do a lot of adapting of in infrastructure not only because it's evs which we've already talked about um, and we know about, you know, that's not new to people, right. but also changing it to be better suited for less vehicles on the road and for, you know, vehicles that are driving themselves on the road. Right. So that's where something, the inclusion of purpose-built vehicles, which Kia is releasing one. Yeah. We don't have too much news on it right now, but of course we will talk about it as the time comes, um, come into play. So those are essentially going to be almost like miniature buses. Mm -hmm. So with the ability to ride share, when a lot of the vehicles that are available for robotaxis now are more so just a regular size, like five-seater, four-seater vehicle, and you wouldn't sit in the driver's seat, obviously. <laughs> that's for the, the machine to do its that's job. That's for the robot. That's for the robot. But... Um, yeah, so just the inclusion of more so rideshare or larger mm -hmm. vehicles that are obviously going to allow a larger amount of people to move with you might help with the fact of reducing vehicles on the road. Because when it comes to just traditional robo-taxis, mm -hmm. I don't see that reducing any cars on the road. No. Drivers, yes. Cars, cars no. no. So there's still going to be that traffic issue. It's just you as a driver not sitting in traffic. It's you as a rider. Yeah, that's... Less road rage. Less, yeah, less road rage. <laughs> if you think about it. I guess it. you can get maybe some work done in the car too. Yes. Maybe shorter office hours will come from that. And that's a big thing. So I see a lot of um, the brands are saying like, oh, you can make better use of your time by, you know, answering calls, responding to emails. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously you can't do that while driving. That's a big thing, you know. Less yeah. distracted drivers. <laughs> Which is where these robo-taxis win. <laughs> yes, for sure. Um, now with that being said, I wanted to talk a little bit about, because we are a Kia Hyundai dealership, oh. uh, Hyundai has a move in Las Vegas, so this mm. is based on the Las Vegas Strip. Like I mentioned earlier in this episode, a lot of these areas are geofenced, so you cannot go outside of these areas. So Hyundai is doing a joint venture with Aptiv, and they created a group called Motional. Motional is essentially robotaxis on the Ionic 5 platform, Ooh. which is a fully electric SUV. We're big fans of the Ionic 5 here. And first of all, premium comfort experience. Absolutely. Yes. I will say compared to like our traditional Uber, which usually may not be the nicest or more us, most up-to-date cars, these are all new vehicles. This is like Uber black, baby. Yeah, these are all gonna be new vehicles, right? Yeah. Um, so that's gonna have a le level four autonomous vehicle. So of course, driverless vehicle. Um, it's gonna improve safety by eliminating accidents caused by human error. Doesn't say robotic error. Yeah. <laughs> Also more accessible, reliable, and affordable form of transportation. Affordable is where I have a little bit of an issue because like I mentioned earlier, as of now, sometimes they will be cheaper, sometimes they won't. Mm -hmm. A majority of the time, it's still gonna be cheaper to just get an Uber or just get a Lyft, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah. As it become probably more popular and yes. that's obviously gonna bring the price down, but yep. yeah, that's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. It, it's interesting, eh? Um, so yeah, robo taxis are still going to require human monitoring. They're not completely perfect. They're not completely human free. Um, it's just you no know, other human in the car with you, if that makes sense. Mm. And Charlotte, are there any other points you want to make before we wrap up today's episode? Yeah. So, I mean, I think when I look at robo taxis, just looking at it from 
kind of the company's perspective is mm -hmm. I really think that the catalyst for this industry is the whole um, desire that people want eco-friendly vehicles. And I, I'm not sure if I actually think that this is a solution because again, like I said, I'm curious to see what the carbon footprint will be of you know trying to develop the infrastructure, not only for EVs, but also just for um, these autonomous vehicles. So mm -hmm. that's something that I'm, I'm really curious about and I'm excited to see you know as studies come out in the future. Uh, but also how much the robo-taxi in the autonomous industry is really about trust. Yes. And that's yes. really what I think that this kind of boils down to is it really is, you know, do you trust the tech? Because sometimes as someone who spends a ton of time with new car tech too, I'm like, oh, I still like having my hands on the wheel. I still like being in control. Yes, yes. I like having human input. And also I enjoy driving cars. I love cars. Yes, that's another thing. I love driving a machine. Yeah. I don't want someone to take my, no one's going to take your car away from you. But I, it's something I would just prefer to drive or yeah. at least be driven. I've had some great Uber driver conversations. And let's be honest, I'm not the most extroverted person, but I do appreciate that human connection mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, just my thing. It's also nice to see, like, ask them about what they're doing, how their day is, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So um, uh, when it all bo boils down to is would you take a robo-taxi? Me? Yeah. I think I would try it. I don't think it's something I would rely on for my transit. If I did not yeah. have a car and I had to rely on public transport or ride shares or just hailed ride services, I don't think I would pick it unless it was cheaper. Yeah. So, that's, so that's what I think. I think for me, I think I would maybe do it for the novelty yeah. once. I would do it just for fun. In, <laughs> like if I was in like Vegas or something like that and I, whoa, robo taxi, wow. Wow. <laughs> it's so neat. Um, but I also think that I would be more prone to do it if it was in an even more controlled environment. Yes. You know, like an airport or like Disney World instead yeah. of a shuttle. I'm not still, I'm not sure if I worked myself up to still doing it in a city with so many other drivers point. and factors. Mm -hmm. um, I think my closing point is humans are imperfect without a doubt. Amen. But, but we do have some things going for us like creativity, mm -hmm. the ability to make judgment calls. Mm -hmm. And just a more so, you can feel things. Do you know what I mean? There has been some instances where, so I read, this made me laugh a little bit, but one of the robo taxis drove into wet concrete. <laughs> I can't say I've done that. <laughs> so there's just better judgment calls sometimes as a human. Now, mm -hmm. of course, the technology is going to improve without a doubt. Of course. This is still fairly new. Um, another thing I want to say is AI can mimic humans pretty darn good. Oh, We've used chat GPT. We have. But it does get tripped up. So uh, yeah. the concrete situation, um, if you think about like nightlife, so places where Ubers or rideshares are a big thing and sometimes they're all clustered together trying to pick mm -hmm. up people, those cars, they start freaking out. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they look like they're lost. And it's, it's kind of funny to see, <laughs> but it, obviously the kinks will get worked out. Yeah. Um, and my last fun fact before we close off today's episode is the first thing I thought of when we talked, where me and Charlotte mentioned that robotaxis are today's episode is, who plugs them in? Yeah, if these are EVs, even if they're not EVs, who is filling these bad boys up with gas? Where do they drive themselves to the gas station and ask for help? Yeah. What's happening? That's what I want to know. Who's charging these? Like, is your payroll just one person and they just drive up and <laughs> all day they fill up with gas or all day they put in a charger? <laughs> but then upon, How do I get that job? <laughs> it sounds like a pretty good job. But upon further research, we, of course, did find out it wasn't as fun as we thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, they do have these control centers. So like mm -hmm. I mentioned, sometimes when the cars get stuck, you will have human interaction and they will program the vehicle to do whatever it, they deem best in that situation and those cars are going to um, go back to their garage when they're low on charge or if there's any sort of mechanical breakdown or something wrong with the car. Go to their home. Yeah, th they have a home which is nice. <laughs> well if you think about it, buses too, they yeah. all have their bus center. So they'll park there, charge up, go back to work when they're ready. Mm -hmm. so. So pretty much what it boils down to is we love technology, but typically it needs a little bit of human refinement. Yeah, technology is a scary thing, and I feel very old for saying that, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I would, you know, uh, whatever. Yeah. That's today's episode. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> on that note. On your not-so-fun fact. <laughs> yeah. I wish it was a better fun fact. Maybe next week's episode. <laughs> 
Well, thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit more about robo taxis, the tech behind them. And would you actually take one? Let us know in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are watching, if you're not watching this on YouTube and you're streaming it, check us out on YouTube at the Kia Hyundai channel. We'll have this posted as a video. We do mm -hmm. tons of different videos on tech, cars, reviews, you name it, we've done it. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, thank you so much for listening, watching, streaming. Maybe and both. We will see you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye.